Jesus. Let's just raise up our hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you're about to do. Let your name be glorified. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We have gathered here not because we have spare time. we need you. We need you. Do a new thing, Lord. Touch someone today. Take us to the next level. from the old into the new. Jesus, exalt your name among us. Jesus, be magnified in our midst. We lift you up on high because if you be lifted up, you will draw all men unto yourself. and declare that this place becomes a portal of heaven. Let angels ascend and descend. Let answers be given in this place. In the next four days, may we have a definite encounter with you. Father, we commit this whole place into your hands. We ask, O oh God, that you will tabernacle among us. Let your name be glorified. Holy Spirit, we invite you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Oh, I said, let's give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, can I come down? Can you help me bring this down? Amen. So I can be close to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. understand that covenant is 
not a conference. Covenant is not a church program. Covenant is not a church initiative. But covenant is a prophetic platform ordained by God to gather his children together devoid of denominational interferences. Covenant is a divine mandate to reenact the dominion mandate given to man by God from the beginning. Covenant is an encounter with the raw hand of God. Covenant is a mouthpiece of God ordained to the nations of the world. Covenant is where we are empowered to take back what the devil has stolen from God's children. Covenant is where global giants will be raised to bring honor and glory to God on the earth. Every prophetic proclamation released a covenant will be will bring instant and immediate turnaround. Covenant is a prophetic platform where tangible and undeniable testimonies will be birth. And so I just want us to have that clear understanding of what covenant is and what covenant is not. So therefore, we thank God for this gathering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Why don't we appreciate uh, Lydia and uh, and the team and the the victory voices for that time of awesome, awesome pure praise. Uh, We thank God for what he is doing. Uh, I have no doubt that God is taking you somewhere. Uh, Just remain pure, remain holy. That is the key. You see, a lot of people are gifted. But there is no holiness in your circle. So holiness is key. And as you maintain that, you will go far. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, my wife is not here tonight. Uh, because she's on an assignment. Uh, Pastor Tower and Pastor Nomti have just landed. So they've just been picked up. Uh, so they're on their way. So I have the opportunity of uh, being the John the Baptist tonight. I hope that it's okay. Uh, preparing the way for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. How many of you are excited I'm, I'm the John the Baptist? <laughs> Amen. All right. In your seated position, why don't we pray? Say with me, Father, may I have an unmissable supernatural encounter with Jesus in this covenant. Father, in the name of Jesus, let today be my day of total freedom from every form of bondage. Father, in the name of Jesus, open my eyes to see you through your word today in Jesus name Amen let's give Jesus some praise Hallelujah we thank God for these mighty men and women of God who are with us tonight God bless you we appreciate your presence uh, in Jesus name Amen well turn with me please in your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 1 The book of Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. Exodus, for your information, is in the Old Testament. It's the second book of the Bible. Exodus chapter 8, verse 1. I read, the Bible says that, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thou sayest the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm sharing with you tonight on what I have titled, Let My Covenant People Go.
go. God is a God of covenant. God is a God of covenant. Why? Because everything he does must be based on his written word. That's why the Bible says that God has exalted or God has lifted his word above his name. So everything God does has its basis in the word. That's why the Bible says that he said to David, my covenant will I not break nor alter that which I have spoken or that which has gone out of my mouth. Because God is a covenant keeping God. I don't know what promises God has given you. I don't know what God has told you. It might seem as if there is a delay. But I have come to encourage someone tonight that the God that we serve, he is a covenant keeping God. That's why the Bible says in the book of Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. In other words, within him there is no nature of lying. When God speaks his word, he brings it to pass because he cannot lie. It is not his nature. He cannot lie. His nature is to fulfill that which he has spoken. So when God gives you a word, it doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter how, how far you are from God. That word will come to pass. And let me say this. I'm saying this on the authority of God's word. That whatever God has promised you within these four days, God will bring it into manifestation. Oh, say a good amen. amen. So the scripture we read in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible says, And the Lord spake, spoke unto Moses, saying, Go unto Pharaoh, and say to Pharaoh, that let my people go, that they may serve me. The key emphasis word we want to look at there is not only let my people go, but what is the purpose for the release? What is the purpose for the release? It says to serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. God delivers us from bondage into freedom. God does not just deliver, he delivers out of, into. And the purpose of God's people being freed is for them to serve. Is for them to serve. So that means if you want to be released from bondage, you have to be willing to serve. You have to be willing to serve. And how do we serve? There are conditions attached to the serving. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100 verse 4. We serve the Lord with what? With gladness. Not with complaining. Not with memory. We serve the Lord with gladness. And for your information, Jesus said, the harvest is plenty. But the laborers are few. In other words, those who serve are few. Now, if the harvest is plenty and the laborers are few, and he says, pray the Lord of the harvest that he may send in laborers, that means if you are in the kingdom and you are serving, you are guaranteed without any shadow of doubt to be protected. Because those who are serving are few. So if you are serving in the house of God, there is no way you can be sick. Say a good amen. When you are serving in the house of God, there is no way you can be broke. Say a good amen. 
when you are serving in the house of God, there is no way you can be depressed because his word says, serve the Lord with what? Serve the Lord with what? Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. That's why in this church, one of the key criteria for serving is you must have gladness. If you are not smiling, you are not permitted to serve. You have to smile. You have to smile. Because you are an ambassador of the kingdom. Praise God. There has not been any day that I have served God memory or complaining. When we were one as a church, I was serving God with gladness. When we were two, I was serving God with gladness. When we became three, quorum for a church, I was serving God with gladness. Praise God. So the secret is to serve God with gladness. Until you come to that point of understanding, you'll be in bondage forever. And I decree over you that you are coming out. Now, the background of this scripture is very key. We have to understand how did the children of Israel get into bondage for God to send Moses back to go and tell Pharaoh that let my people go that they may serve me. We have to understand. Now, in Genesis chapter 15, in Genesis chapter 15, God was having a communication with Abraham. And Abraham believed God and the Bible says that it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And then the next thing that came out through that conversation was that God, I mean, I'm childless. The only one left in my house is this Eliezer who is going to bear my name. Now, let, let's read it so that you can get the, the full concept of what we are talking about. Genesis chapter 15 from verse 1. Are you there? I read. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And he beheld the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but the one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, look now towards the heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord, and he accounted unto him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of the air of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord, how shall I know that I will inherit it? Now, I want you to understand what's going on here. There is a conversation going on between Abraham and God. Remember, Abraham is a friend of God. So as they were talking, then all of a sudden, I mean, God said, look outside, count the stars. If you can't count them, then that means uh, uh, if you are able to count them, that means I will not be able to fulfill my promises towards you. And as Abraham counted the stars, he said, okay, God, now I know that you'll be able to fulfill what you have said. But then Abraham, in faith, he had a level of unbelief in him. 
Has God promised you something that sometimes it feels as if nothing is happening? God says, I'll make you the head and not the tail. And all you see around you is being the tail. Colleagues that you started with have gone ahead of you. They pray one prayer and th thunder, thunder strikes and things happen. Abraham out of his father's house, God said to him, I'll make you a father of many nations. I want you to follow this carefully. Now, in Abraham's house, he had servants, he had slaves who were giving birth with them. But Abraham, who has the promise, nothing was happening. Sometimes you might carry the promise of God over your life and it might seem as if nothing is happening. David was anointed as king in the presence of his brothers. But yet there was a king on the throne. Are you following what I'm saying? So sometimes God will give you a word and it will seem as if nothing is happening. As a matter of fact, the more you pray sometimes, the worse the situation becomes. Is that not true? Sometimes the more you pray, the more you fast, you wonder, nothing seems to be happening. Things are getting worse. And so at this point, Abraham is to an extent of a child. Because he is a carrier of the covenant. He is a carrier of the blessing. Yet in his own life, nothing is happening for him. Have you noticed that most of the times, it's not the tree that bears the fruits. Is the branches that bear the fruits. <laughs> I'll pause for you to think about it. Sometimes a tree most of the time will be complaining. Why wow, then of that carries the promise? Is the main tree that carries the promise. Are you following what I'm saying? This is very important. But what you have to understand is that you are the carrier of the blessing. One touch. And then Hagar started singing insinuating songs. How many of you know what I mean? I came one touch. <laughs> we are going somewhere. So through this conversation, all of a sudden, God got upset. God got angry. And God said to Abraham, he said to him, I am the Lord. Who brought you out of the air of the Chaldeans to give to you this land to inherit it? Me. Now look at what's going to happen. A covenant is going to be cut. This is the first time a covenant is going to be cut between God and Abraham. First time. Very important. So God said to him, bring me a three-year-old Haifa, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Verse 10. The Bible says that then he brought all these to him and cut them in two down the middle and he placed each piece opposite the other, but he did not cut them. God never said to him, cut them into two. Did you notice that? That instruction was never given. But Abraham understood. Now Abraham came from a background where his father's lineage, remember Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. And in Abraham's lineage, they used to actually sacrifice human beings to a god called Molech. Their children will go into fire and they will be sacrificed to a God called Molech. So Abraham had a perspective of sacrifice to, one, to, to a certain extent. So Abraham cut Abraham until there's a presence of fire. Now an altar requires four things. Number one, an altar requires wood. Number two, an altar requires order. Every altar that is laid unto God, order is required. Order, very key. If you notice, Elijah laid an altar and there was order. Now, after the altar has these three things, the fourth thing must be the sacrifice. And then when the sacrifice is placed onto the altar, fire then must be set to the altar. Are you following me? So when Abraham cuts the animals into two, the only fire available then 
was God. He was the only fire. Now why? Because he has to pass through this, this sacrifice so that Abraham will know. Because the Bible says that once this was happening, Abraham fell into a deep sleep. A deep sleep, verse, verse 12, verse 12, run with me quickly because I'm only laying the foundation. Now, the Bible said, when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham, and behold, a horror and great darkness fell upon him. Verse 13, the Bible says, then he said to Abraham, look at the covenant, he said, no of a surety. Now, at this point, Abraham is asleep. He's in deep sleep. Like Adam, he's in deep sleep. Something is about to cut out of him. Because your Eve cannot be taken out of you whilst you are looking at surety. That descendants of you will, be, will, will get into a land. They will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. And they will serve them and they will afflict them. How many years? How many years? 400 years. And then the next part of that covenant is that God says, and after they have been afflicted for 400 years, they are going to mention this month is exactly 400 years. Exactly 400 years. So there is a president at this point that is telling certain people to go home. Britain is coming out of Europe after 40 years, you have to have understanding of the times. God operates with 40 years, 400 years, 40 days. And if you have no understanding, you'll miss what God is doing. So, so somebody is saying you need to go home. Jacob went to Egypt and as a result of that, they became a nation. They were born in Egypt. You might be born in a strange land, but that's not your land, praise God. You're going to go into bondage for 400 years. Descendants after you. And we know the end of the story. Somebody came up called Moses, and he had no understanding, and he prolonged this 400 years to 430 years. I'm sorry to say that many Christians we have no understanding. We shout a lot, we scream a lot, but we have no understanding. There are more Christians in this country as to what your children should be taught. Whilst Christians are sleeping and shouting and jumping in church, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and feeling goose pimples, laws are being made that are affecting Christians. The enemy has succeeded, succeeded in putting division in the hearts of many Christians. So you sit by your sister or brother in the church, but you don't trust each other. Because we have no understanding of the times. Second Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar, even though they were few, they had understanding of the times. And they told their brothers what they ought to do. Understanding of the time. So understanding is key. If we are going to experience the freedom that God is bringing to the church, understanding is key. And, and, and dancing and all these things are good, praise God. But after we've jumped around, shout around, Feel the goose pimples. What do we go back to? Bondage. So Exodus chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible says that. And the children of Israel grew more mightier. Than the children standing. That means we have so much power. But we are not using the power. Our churches are being sold and being turned into mosques. Our churches have been sold. Bring traffic to the area 
So because of that, they will not grant you planning permission. But there are Muslims who also have buildings and have their meetings, but they don't bring traffic. And Christians are there shouting and jumping. And, and after today, when you go home, someone will ask you, how is the service? You say it was very... That's why Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 it says, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. But in all you're getting, get understanding. Understanding is key. Understanding is key. If we are going to make any significant impact as Christians, understanding is key. Yeah, it's good to pray. I believe in praying for leaders. I believe it. Don't get me wrong. But you see, praying for your leader but not acting on the prayer. Jews, and then Mordecai said, fast and pray. He said, okay, I'll fast and pray, but I'm also going to go to the king. So after we have prayed and fasted, we have to now act. We have to go to the people of power. But just pray, it's not enough. We pray a lot. We shout a lot. The most attentive, if God wanted the devil to die by fire, God is a consuming fire. He would have consumed the devil himself. So your prayer and shouting, die by fire. No, the devil cannot die by fire. That's, that's, that's lack of understanding prayer. And do you know that's the most intense part of our prayer meetings? If that will help you to get a little bit of satisfaction, praise God. But where God is taking us, we need wisdom, we need knowledge, and we need understanding. So Exodus chapter 1, Exodus chapter 1 verse 7. Now let's read from verse 6. The Bible says that, generation but the children of Israel were what fruitful and increased how abundantly and multiply and grew how exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with who but look at what happened they say the Bible says that now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph and he said to his people Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply, and it happen in the end. Therefore they set taxmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Python and Ramesses. The children of Israel were more Yet, they had. It's time for the church to go back to understanding. Philip came to the Ethiopian eunuch and asked him in Acts chapter 8, Do you understand what you're reading? You see, sometimes I don't think the church understands what it's reading. Many Christians, we don't understand what we're reading. Many pastors, we don't understand what we're reading. It's on the wall, like Nebuchadnezzar. We are reading it, but we don't understand it. It's time to go back to understanding. If you have no understanding, people who have understanding will always rule over you. For slaves to be riding on horsebacks and princes walking on barefoot on the ground. It's an insult on God. We have 10 our churches. We don't shout here. We teach you something so it will provoke you. So when you go home and you are sleeping, 
what you have heard will be ringing in your mind, in your spirit, and in your soul. The Christians will say, politics is dirty, yet politicians are making rules for you. They are determining when you wake up, what time you wake up, where you go, what you earn, and so on and so forth. It's time for us to rise up. The children of Israel, they were more mighty than the Egyptians. Read further. They didn't succeed in this. So Pharaoh brought a new law. He says, kill every male child. Leave the women. Why? Because when it's time for battle, the women can fight. And that was the time when Jesus was born. Kill every male child on the two. When Moses was born, You think the devil doesn't know what you are born for? Sometimes he knows you more than you know yourself. And the sad truth is many Christians play into the hands of the devil. And sometimes we allow the devil to use us as agents and tools for Why? Why? It should be the most united place. Psalm 133 verse 1 to 3 say, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. It's like the oil, the anointing, and it goes to the garments and to the soles of his feet. Why was the neck skipped? Because the only way the devil can bring division between the head and the body is to place a yoke. The neck will say, turn right. When there is a yoke on the neck, it hinders, it impedes the growth of the church. Sometimes there's an anointing between the neck and the head. Stand alone. Why can we not bring our businesses together and expand it? He knows. There's a strategy of Pharaoh. It's a divide and rule strategy. He thinks that people are his people. So this church being my church before the day I say it's my church, God will kill me. It has never, that word my church has never come out of Of hell shall not prevail. If you say it's yours, you won't be able to build it. Is not, this is our second year. Covenant is not a conference. We have gathered here to hear the mind of God. And I decree over you that from hallelujah. Amen. This is the second year and great things are happening already. God is taking us somewhere. It's time. And when you are in a church and you are serving, don't think the pastor is using you. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Who is your rewarder? Not the pastor. In place. You've missed God. Oh, I serve so much. They didn't even say thank you. If I give you a thousand pounds, it will finish. But if God gives you a generational blessing, that goes on to a thousand. Stand these foundational truths. Nobody is using you. You are sent. So he went out. He saw two people fighting. One Egyptian, one Jew. He killed thought. He would understand that he has been sent to deliver them. Out again, he sees this same guy fighting with another brother of his. And when Moses started separating them, sometimes the very people you've been sent to deliver are the people who deliver you to the enemy. The very same people turn against you is part of your calling. <laughs> Someone that you know they turn against you is part of your calling. Don't allow it to get to your heart because the devil's strategy is to poison your heart. 
the Bible says Moses thought that he would understand, but he did not understand. And as a result of that, he prolonged the, the covenant which was meant for to be for 400 years to 430 years. But I love another thing. Daniel, the Bible says, understood by the books. And da Daniel had understanding, he shortened slavery. The quickest route to your destiny is understanding. It's time to get understanding. And getting understanding is through the book. And many of us don't like reading. <laughs> we'll read everything. We'll watch everything. Once we take the Bible, we start sleeping. Understanding is key. It's time for us to see Christian men, Christian women who have understanding, who have been born into purpose for purpose. Born into purpose for purpose. Listen, you were not born by accident. God gave birth to you for a purpose. Amen. But you see, when you don't understand your purpose, you even abuse yourself and abuse the people around you. I'm laying the foundation on understanding because this week some things are going to come that we need understanding to grasp. God has sent us a man and a woman of God who have understanding of this covenant we are talking about. It is not... Are you following what I'm saying? It's not so much in the... Sh Sometimes we like shouting. Yeah, there's a place for shouting and screaming. But it's more in what the man and the woman of God, the time they have spent with God and what God has given to them for you. We have been praying as a church. This Friday will be 40 days praying and fasting for you. We are not gathering by because we want to gather. No, no. No, no. I just I love I love preaching in in our church because our members are uh, I mean they are awesome. I just I just love teaching the people that God has called us to. They are awesome. Awesome, I'm telling you. Awesome. If you invite me anywhere on a Sunday, I wouldn't go. <laughs> Amen. Because if you take care of the few, God will give you multitudes. So we have not just put together something and because, no, please get this. This is, this is a mandate from God for someone. And may I suggest to you that, yes, during this covenant, testimonies, expectation cards will be given to you. Don't just write, God, give me a shoe. God, give me, give me a car. God, give me, give me a house. Give me, give me, give me a promotion. Give me, give me, give me, give, give me. Don't, don't know. Think generations. Amen. Amen. Think about the kingdom. Everything else in the kingdom will be added unto you. Hallelujah. As a thing, the kingdom. I said, what well, thing, the kingdom. Let that be your priority this week. When you get these expectation cards, these covenant expectation cards, let it be your heart desire that it's about the kingdom. Oh, my wife is here. Let's appreciate her. <laughs> Hallelujah. It, was, it felt like I was in a lion's den. If she had come a bit earlier, you'd have seen how my anointing would be flowing. <laughs> I just have five more minutes left. So, this week is a holy week. Please don't take this week for granted. 
a man and a woman who have spent time with God over the years. God has sent them to us. Like the woman from the Shunammite woman in 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 9. Elisha was passing there every time. But one day she said to her husband, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. God has sent us holy man and holy woman of God. And they are going to spot one word. And just that one word, let it be a covenant between you and God. When you come to God, you come to God on the basis of that word. And say, this is what you said about me and about us. So we are believing you for this. So this week, get understanding. Don't allow anything to distract you. Get understanding this week. Be hungry. There's something about them. They carry an unusual grace. Last year when they came to us from last year till now, God has transformed our levels in realms without that the mind cannot comprehend. So I'm preparing you this week to be hungry. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside anything that would distract you. Come with a heart ready to receive. Do you know that like 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 Jacob Jacob had an encounter with God. And he said, God was in this place and I knew it not. You can be in a place where God is moving and not know that God is moving. The man who was at the pool of Bethsaida, he was... The two blind men who came to Jesus, they were believing God for a touch. They were believing Jesus for a touch. The Bible said, Jesus touched them and nothing happened. And Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. This is our holy week. Our holy week. Where we are going to have an encounter with God like never before. I want you to prepare your heart. Prepare your spirit. This is not a conference. Amen? This is not a conference. God has sent a grace to us. If this man is looking for his choir, his choir alone is bigger than me. <laughs> so if he's looking for a place to preach, he won't come here. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, he won't come here. But God has sent him here for a purpose. Yeah. For a purpose. And don't be like Jerusalem. And don't let Jesus weep over us. Because we are not sensitive to the times. Jesus wept over the city because the city had no understanding. May it not be your portion. This week, God will release you. Amen. This week, God will let you go. Amen. This week, you will have an encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, something, Amen. what has been impossible, yes, will be made possible. Amen. This week, you will have an encounter Amen. with the Holy God of Israel. Amen. This week, God will move you from your past into your future. Amen. This week is your week of turn around. Amen. I know what God told me. I know what God told me. I can hear a little from God. When God said last year, this is a theme for the year, let my people go. I didn't know that August will be exactly 400 years. And there is a particular country in West Africa. They are thought from slaves from America, born slaves, whatever, going back. 
I have a little insight with God. Just a little bit. I hear God a little. And I know that this week, something is shifting. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Did you receive it? Amen. Let's give Jesus a better praise. Let's please rise up on our feet. Just for two minutes. We are actually I have an encounter with you this week. Why don't you open your mouth and start talking to God? An encounter with destiny. An encounter with grace. An encounter with power. Understanding on a higher level. A new level of understanding. Ask God to open the eyes of your understanding. The eyes of your understanding. Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. May I have an encounter with you, Lord. Change my situation. Change my life. Move us to the next level. Father, let this week be a week of liberation. Let it be a week of transformation. Let your people go this week. Every form of bondage, we thank you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us begin to see the nations. Let us see gifts come out. Let every hidden thing come out this week. Let your word come forth like hammer. Let your word come forth like hammer. Let it break everything that has had enough. Let generational curses be destroyed. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be released. Let this week, we decree this week. We decree this week. Let this place be a portal of heaven. Open the heavens of us. Let your anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens, let it be made available for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let every yoke be destroyed. Let every burden be removed. Let every yoke be destroyed. Let every burden be removed. Let every yoke be destroyed. Let every burden be removed. Let every yoke be destroyed. Let every burden be removed. By the reason of the anointing. Father, your people have not come to gather in vain. Let their troubles not be in vain. Those who have come from near and far. Father, let, oh God, their time spent be worth it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, touch everyone. Jesus, revive us. Revive every dead dream. Revive everything that has been dead in us. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us understanding. Thank you for giving us clarity. Thank you for opening the eyes of understanding. May we not live here the same. Now, Father, give us the power to accomplish every change that is required. Let your name be glorified. Let somebody testify that during Covenant 2019, their destiny was turned around. Let somebody testify that during Covenant 2019, they had a definite encounter with you. We thank you. We give you praise. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Let's give Jesus a better praise. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. I 
said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Did you receive it tonight? Are you going to be hungry for understanding? In Jesus' name. Well, tomorrow we start um, half six. Let's come in early and let's pray at least for, for 30 minutes and then we get ready. It will be a life transforming encounter. Amen. 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 Yes, um, today some big men of God called and they were coming. I said, please don't come. I'm the one preaching today. Please don't come. I said, don't come today because when your fathers are here, what can you preach? Amen. So tomorrow, everyone is coming. Friday will be awesome. You know, this one of God is, is, is anointed. I'm telling you. And they have come for us. Let's drain everything in them. Let's drain the anointing. Let's be like that woman with the issue of blood. Let's come with that hunger to draw everything so that by the time they go, they'll know that we have drawn something from them. Sunday I was preaching on understanding the anointing. So tired. Monday the whole day I was so tired. When anointing is drawn, you know it's drawn. Amen. So please come like that. Let's draw. We are going to draw like never before. I'm telling you. This year we had a privilege of preaching in their church. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Massive church. One of the largest churches in Lagos. When we talk about large, you know, Nigerians, excuse my language. I, I think I was conceiving like you know, Nigerians, they do big stuff. When I say big, not UK big. It's huge. That's why I say, just his choir alone is bigger than this whole auditorium. <laughs> so you can imagine what you are talking about. So come with great expectation and our lives will never be the same. Amen. Amen. Well, in our standing position, we want to take this opportunity to appreciate all the men and the women of God that have come from far and near. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Thank you so, so much for coming. We appreciate you. Thank you for coming. We love you. We appreciate you so much. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we were not expecting you to come, so... Uh, you have come to encourage us. Amen. Amen. You have come to encourage us and we pray that we pray that God will, God will empower you. God will grace you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit for our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance knowing that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Amen. The Lord give you peace on every side. Amen. May God cause you to be the head and not the tail. Amen. May the word the Lord has given you from here, may he empower you to fulfill it. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance knowing that you uh, a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. See you tomorrow in Jesus' name.